journalist and human rights activist. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My youngest son asked me a scary question the other day. We were in the Paris Metro, line four. The carriage was packed with tired, fed up commuters returning from work. He whispered in my ear, Mom, what would happen if I stood up now and said, Allahu Akbar? I freaked out. I even think my heart stopped for a few seconds. I immediately turned towards Unsi and covered his mouth rather forcefully with both my hands. It is only then that I realized from the consternated look in his eyes that he wasn't actually going to say it. I sighed with relief and begged him to never do that, ever. My son, Unsi, asked me a scary question the other day. Yet if you think about it, it is not scary at all, much rather sad. Is there anything sadder than seeing your own language hijacked by a few radicals to the point that three simple words in it like God is great would terrify people? On the other hand, Every time I visit my eldest son in the western city where he lives and works, I face a quasi-similar situation. Whenever an Arabic word spontaneously slips out of my mouth while we are eating lunch or out shopping, some people unmistakably stare at us in a weird way. Either ashamedly scared or blindly solidary or most often than not, unjustifiably angry, depending on their political affiliation. It would be an understatement to say how much this public discomfort with the Arabic language bothers Munir, who is a young, accomplished professional speaking five languages. It even becomes worse when my partner, who happens to have a beard, comes along. I can actually see panic in people's eyes when they look at him. It doesn't matter that he's a yoga instructor and one of the most peaceful and kind men you could ever meet. Stereotypical profiling will always beat reality and common sense. Sometimes I feel compelled to stand in court and defend us. We are not terrorists, we're nice people. I myself am a staunch critic of Islamic fundamentalism and have been threatened many times because of it. Obviously, this all goes on in my head. I don't say anything. I try to understand the Westerner's perspective, that my beautiful language, of which I'm utterly proud, has become linked to violence in their collective consciousness that the words Allahu Akbar have become a sort of a trailer song to an ISIS horror movie and the constant prelude of a heinous, horrific crime, that we don't all have the ability to question generalizations. But then again, at other times, when I'm in my don't you dare mood, which is quite often, I must admit, I look back at them defiantly as if to say, yes, I speak Arabic. Go ahead and sue me. Yes, I speak Arabic and six other languages, but it is with this language that I chose to express my atheism and to attack extremists, putting my life and my family at risk. Yes, I come from an Arab country, but it is in that country that I successfully fought to publish an erotic magazine tackling taboos in Arabic. Yes, I hold an Arab passport, but it is with this passport that I have traveled the world to give talks and conferences about my books. Yes, I'm an Arab woman, but it is with this strong warrior Arab female identity 
that I have struggled to defend equality, secularism, women and gay rights, freedom of expression, and I'm certainly not docile, meek, oppressed, or repressed. Oh, and I do not belly dance, nor ride camels for that matter. <laughs> So you decry terrorists, so do I. But they are everywhere and from all nationalities. Trust me, those who shout Allahu Akbar are a minority. Let's not underestimate the political and corporate terrorists thriving in the Western world. So you condemn veils, so do I. But they come in different textures. Let's not disregard the veils of ignorance and media manipulation, brainwashing people. So you condemn the abuse and belittling of women, so do I. But let's look around us and check violence against women's statistics in most Western countries and see if anyone has the right to be patronizing on that level. So you denounce hypocrisy, bigotry and discrimination, so do I. But what about Francis Le Pen or the Netherlands Wilders? What about what's been happening in Hungary, Poland or Austria? What about Charlottesville? So you defend the values of democracy, freedom and justice. So do I, but we'd better realize that they are as threatened in the Western world as much as anywhere else, if not more. Bottom line is, I don't want to live in a world where my sons and other decent people would be held responsible for the criminal, immoral, or inhumane acts of someone else just because they come from the same geographical region. I don't want to live in a world where my sons and other decent people would need to apologize for or be ashamed of being born in a particular country. I don't want to live in a world where my sons and other decent people would be suspected of being potential terrorists just because they speak a specific language. Because if you think about it, none of us has picked where to be born, in which conditions, and with which identity, etiquettes, and characteristics. And yet, we are constantly judged, and we judge others based on such arbitrary parameters. Jose, Muhammad, John, black, white, gay, straight, male, female, trans, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, Palestinian, Syrian, American. So many unchosen labels, so many lifetime prison sentences. That is why I strive for a world where who we are is not defined by the cards that we were randomly dealt the day we were born. Rather, by what we do with our lives, the choices that we consciously make, the humane values that we consciously decide to defend, and the walls, the walls that we consciously seek to abolish between cultures and people rather than erect. <sighs> A world where refugees are welcomed with open arms, rather with judgmental, distrustful gazes. A world where our humaneness is our only nationality, our only gender, our only religion, our only race. A world with no merciless terrorists and with no sexist, racist presidents either. Indeed, indeed, that is the world that I strive for and that I want to live in in 2030. Now tell me, what about you? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.